Hi, everyone. I'm Clément Corbet from Google, and I'm going to be talking about static performance analysis. So an example about why we want to do that, we're doing a lot of machine learning at Google uh, using a library called TensorFlow, and we're doing that both, both on our data centers and on user hardware. And TensorFlow is all about uh, multiplying tensors. So you really want to optimize this kernel called uh, Gemlopy at pretty much all costs. You can spend a lot of engineering time, and a lot of CPU time uh, optimizing this. Uh, so to do that, you can uh, use benchmarks. The nice thing about that is that they have usually closer to, to real life performance, but they're super slow, and it requires access to the hardware that you're going to uh, run on. On the other hand, yeah, if you have static analysis, it's usually uh, pretty fast and very producible. Uh, on the downside, it's hard to model input dependent behavior, such as uh, branches and uh, uh, memory cache behavior. Uh, so we have a static performance analyzer. It essentially takes a basic block of instructions, and it runs a simulator on it. And it spits out an annotated trace, um, port pressure annotations, and it computes the latency of your basic block. And you can use that to fit that to an engineer that will uh, look at the code and come up with better code, or to fit that to a schedule, uh, machine uh, scheduler uh, to try to do that automatically. Um, in terms of API, uh, we have a target independent simulator interface. So essentially, like um, you have the target that will create the simulator. And then you just have a run uh, function that takes a basic block of MC inst, of MC inst and spits out the simulation log. And you're going to run analysis on the simulation log. Uh, internally, the simulator is it's essentially like a, a bunch of comp components connected together. Uh, so you have some generic components. Um, for example, you have the schedule and the register renamer that just tap into the MC SCAD model from LVM or the MC register info. And you have some target-specific ones, for example, the Intel fetcher, because we found out that it's actually, for some kernels, actually quite important to uh, model what's happening in the front end of the CPU. So that's uh, a screenshot of what the one of the analysis that we have looks like. So it's essentially like a Yakalak front end, for those of you who know it. Uh, it computes the uh, inverse throughput of the block. It annotates, it gives you like the port pressure for um, how the CPU executes the the kernel, and it gives you uh, instruction level annotation of the, the used ports. Uh, we also tried automatic scheduling. So the goal here is to minimize the, the simulated latency of the block. So it's essentially an alternative to a post-array machine sched, but we have more time to, to do it. Uh, we tried a very dumb thing, which is essentially like, essentially like uh, try random scheduling and see uh, what the latency is. And another one was using a genetic algorithm. Uh, so the exhaustive search uh, actually worked quite well. Like if I go back to my uh, example at the beginning, uh, we made Gemlop 0 to 2% faster on actual benchmarks. Uh, so note that there are no regressions, uh, which is nice. And we also worked on LibWebPs. Um, the genetic algorithm make things much faster. So on this kernel, you can get a 10% improvement in a, by running the, the algorithm for about 100 milliseconds. Uh, so that's still a lot uh, slower than the uh, uh, heuristic based uh, post array scheduler, but it's way better. Uh, what we are going to do next is uh, interestingly, Andrea from Sony was working on a similar tool at the same time as us. Uh, that's called LVMMCA, which is now submitted. So we're going to submit uh, the front end simulation into this tool, and we're going to make the genetic scheduler available as a machine function pass uh, for people who want to optimize using a lot of CPU. You can try it out here. Thank you.